Oh my God, look who's back. I know it's been a while, guys. The last couple of months have been absolutely crazy. 2018 season was absolutely hellish for us. It's time to get you guys caught up, so let's get started. All right, guys, so you know what happened when we got flooded, right? After we got flooded, we lost about 70% of our stuff, and then we got hit with deer after that. So what did survive, like some of our peppers, some of our tomatoes survived, and some of the eggplants survived out in the fields. The litter dealers, little, little guys, they came in and started tearing up all of our tomatoes, and they just kept coming back. Even though we put some string, we tried some soap, um, the only thing that really protects us from, from the deer or, or the fencing and which we were able to do around our raised bed area, which works really great, but anything that was covered out in the fields, they eventually tear through that. Um, so, you know, we, we didn't get anything out of those fields. Uh, so that was a complete loss, um, which was really heartbreaking to see that. But the, the good thing is that, you know, the stuff that survived in the high tunnel kept us going right through the rest of the season took care of our CSA members, so really happy about that. Um, now, the other thing that happened was the uh, the birds came in, and I'm not sure if you guys remember, but we lost about 60 acres from a farm that was, uh, not a farm, but a piece of land that was behind us, and, and then got bought out by a uh, development, and they tore down all 60 acres to bring in a whole new development, like 20, uh, 200 homes and they were just knocking trees down and all the trees that used to be back there sucking up the moisture when the rains come down <clears throat> got all chopped down and so now you got all these homes being built so all the deer that used to be back there all the um wildlife the wildlife yeah. all, all the birds they just came right into our property this beautiful organic farm <laughs> and they just had a, a ball on the blueberries and we were planning on doing our first blueberry picking this year and within three days, they were gone. And I didn't even think they completely ripened all the way because I checked it, they were starting to ripe. And then uh, within three days, uh, I went back over there to just to recheck, you know, see if it was a good time to pick, and they were gone. I mean, I went from one bush to another, and I'm like, well, maybe they did one row. Uh, maybe, you know, they skipped one and did another. And then, but, you know, within three, four days, they were all wiped out. And I know I should have put netting on it, and I knew it was going to be 50% loss because I didn't have the netting. Um, the money that we should have had that for this past year, last year, we should have had the year before. But again, we got flooded the year before that, which uh, tapped into you know the monies into that. So that basically bit us pretty bad. So the deer, uh, the birds, um, they just pretty much you know wiped us out, and then the flooding just it was just like getting three huge uppercuts and you know and finally going down but I'm not going down for the count okay so <laughs> the good thing is that our high tunnel did good I mean we can definitely solve the problem by uh, figuring out how to re um, deal with the water issues because when you get like 10 to 12 inches in a couple of you know a day or two there's only so much you're gonna you're gonna be able to do your low spots gonna build up water so you know you can try to channel some of this area out but when you're like five minutes away from, from the beach, um, we have a lot of issues with, um, from what I can see, the water levels rising in this area. I'm not going to get into all of that, but I can see what's happening, all the tack stitches, the water's just sitting there. Um, and they're talking this year's going to be worse. Um, and we got lucky last year because we didn't get hit with a direct hit from any hurricane, so we got lucky with that. But when you're, when you're talking about saturated waters, and when the way Franken weather's been acting up, mm -hmm. you know, you can always count on good old Franken weather to pour down on all the farmers. I'm not going to get into that, but we know what's <laughs> going on. Um, and uh, so, so yeah, I mean, it's it's a bad situation. It's it's a uh, it, it's not good between the deers, the flooding, uh, and the birds. Um, we can dump in probably at least 30 grand to take care of uh, a lot of these problems in terms of the deer fencing um, and then the netting. Um, but because we've been hit with so much this past couple of years and what's going to happen 
possibly this year, most likely this year with the weather. It's just we can only handle so much. And you know, when, when you when you're you know robbing Peter, you try to pay Paul. It's just you know the numbers just aren't aren't, aren't aren't working. So we we decided, as much as I hate to do it, um, as much work as I put into this farm, we decided to try to sell the farm to somebody else who can just take it from here uh, and, and run with it. Hopefully, we've been trying to find other other farmers who. Who, who will do that but everyone's been hit around here I'm not the only farmer a lot of farms are being hit with uh, with the flooding um, if it's not flooding it's drought um, and you know it's just not good for farmers so I hope you guys are doing your thing out there getting your seeds uh, getting your game plan what you're going to be growing this year uh, timing out what you need when your harvesting is get your and one thing I will definitely say this is is this year we were on top of um, so much of, of, of doing a lot of prep, preparing what we did harvest uh, um, to eat through the winter. Like we're still eating zucchini, squash, peppers. Um, the corn didn't survive, the deer ate that too. That was a really big one I was really hoping on um, um, getting. And there's so many different things you can do with recipes. I mean, we're gonna be sharing some of those ideas with you guys. Some really quick recipes that you can take fresh food from your garden and, and transfer it into a healthy meal for you and your family. And, and us having four kids, you know, that's not an easy task. So we have been really trying to get on top of our game as far as like replacing what kind of, you know, uh, uh, nuggets that we would normally get from uh, from BJ's. Like we're vegan. We went vegan again uh, last November 2017. Uh, so we're over a year uh, now uh, going back to vegan again. Not raw vegan like we were few years back uh, we did that for three years um, that's a long story but so we're definitely gonna get be getting into uh, some some vegan recipes so I'm gonna be sharing some stuff for you guys and uh, we're gonna be hopefully they are thinking about starting um, a new channel we're not sure about that we're trying to figure out what's going on with with YouTube um, you know with with the uh, uh, monetization thing I don't know sure what's going on with them you know you're not gonna make any real money off of YouTube um, and, and I, I get that you know most people don't want to watch gardening I understand that it's not as it's exciting or whatever I'm a boring person right <laughs> so uh, you know Lord forbid you learn how to you know grow something that's healthy for you and your kids you know I mean <clears throat> that is the biggest thing is like you know it's, it's gotten to the point where everything is starting to go up seeds are starting to go up the cost of plants are starting to go up what you find in the grocery store is ridiculous I mean if you're not shopping in, in the in the in the fresh area uh you know you're pretty much just depending on processed foods and even when you do get fresh stuff the organic stuff you I mean it doesn't taste like it does in your yard you I mean if, if you if you grow your own tomatoes you know what i'm talking about uh, taking care of our kids or family that's 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 my the most important thing we should all be doing and you know the one thing i, I do appreciate from from being around here and uh, reaching out to the community, doing a CSA, selling to restaurants. We couldn't get to the to the, to the farmers markets. That was going to be a tough one anyway. They're just really hard to get into around here. <clears throat> but I knew that going in. But reaching out to everybody around the community has been real nice. Um, and um, it's nice when you when you grow something and people appreciate what you're growing and they taste the difference comparing it to the grocery store. And they're like, oh my God, I never tasted carrots that tasted like this. So oh, your carrots are so beautiful, all the different colors. And just, just that gratification is, is nice. But, you know, when, when, you're, when you're trying to, you know, you're running around and trying to make a buck selling produce, it's not an easy day, thing to do in, in, in an area like this uh, where, you know, 95% is, 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 is genet you know, not genetically, but yeah, you can say genetically modified because a lot of the corn and soy out here. And everybody else is just growing regular tomatoes and you know squash, um, conventional. Um, and, and unfortunately, that's that's you know not safe. You know when you're consuming high amounts of, of uh, chemical fertilizers, you know people just say, oh, it's beautiful, it looks nice, so oh, it's you know it doesn't have any marks on it. You know, but when you're competing against conventional prices and people just look at you with this weird face because your prices are a little bit higher, um, you know it's it's just you know. It's, it's not easy to compete in that kind of arena. That's why we really wanted to reach out to certain restaurants, certain chefs who, who can appreciate uh, growing in season and CSA uh, members who also can appreciate picking up fresh produce on a weekly basis. So I don't want to ramble on, guys, but I just want to reach out to you guys. And again, 
I apologize for not making a video, but going through all that stuff through 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 uh, through the summer was just really heartbreaking on me. Seeing the flood, seeing you know the deer, and then the birds just wiping out all the blueberries. It was just I just felt like I was getting kicked in the stomach several times, and you know seeing all that stuff transpire, and you know you're dealing with crazy you know franken weather and, and trying to deal with all that, and then finally come to the conclusion that we might have to sell. It's it's not an easy thing um, for me on a personal basis, and 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 it just wasn't in, in a place during that time to to do videos. You know, I mean, you're scrambling around trying to keep your head straight. Um, you know, so definitely it taught me a huge lesson um, and, and and letting go of things that you know you get really attached to. So, um, but as long as I have you know my family and my wife hasn't left me yet. <laughs> TikTok. I don't, know, right? I don't know how many women can show up with this craziness. But yeah, so that's it, guys. So we're going to be uh, posting uh, some stuff for you guys and showing you uh, what we're going to be doing. And we're going to be coming with some recipes. So I know some of you guys have been uh, looking forward to that for a long time. So enough is enough. It's time to get on with it. So you guys take care. Keep doing your thing out there. Get your seeds going. It's almost that time to start cranking up those plants. And uh, before you know it, it'll be springtime, all right? So y'all take care, peace and love, and I'll see you soon. See ya. Davo Beats. Summer's lit and the feeling's rare. All my people, they be real aware. We have to share, but we without a care. Found my youth, yes, a fountain there. We out of there. Boy.